my career as a DJ started, you know, in the mid '80s. I was inspired by um, uh, the golden era of rap. You know, the Run DMCs, the Houdinis, Grandmaster Flash, the Furious Five, UTFO, etc. And I think, like in high school, for me, um, people were choosing what they wanted to be. You know, where you're going to be a rapper, where you're going to be a break dancer, where you're going to be a DJ. You know, and some people tried to be all of those things. I knew I wasn't going to be a rapper. I tried to break dance, almost broke my neck, canceled that out. I started DJing, and that was really it. It's like it like connected to me, and I connected to it, and I have been DJing like since I was like 12, 13 years old. My style of DJing is um, kind of breakbeat style, turntableless DJ battle style. Because at that time, you know, DJs were having to win competitions back in the day to be noticed. You know, by the time I really started getting involved, um, watching Jazzy Jeff, you know, uh, DJ Cash Money, DJ Scratch. In those days, you had to really know how to cut and, and show your skills on the turntable. So when you DJ and you do those type of things, you are usually cutting up breaks, break beats, right where the the break happens, you know, the exciting part of a record and that's when you start manipulating that break and repeating phrases and phrases over again um, and showing your skill. So uh, as I've developed over the years through radio, touring with acts, uh, scratching on records, I still scratch on the break. It's still my style. So um, I've, I definitely emulated um, the fast precision style type of DJ that I would say Jazzy Jeff or Cash Money or Mixmaster Ice were back in those days. Oh, still are, I should say. So, so back in the day, DJs, I would say in the 80s, the DJ had to basically connect with a rap group to be acknowledged. The list of people I DJ for became a who's who of Atlanta's music scene. Criss Cross, JD, Bow Wow, Monica, Sierra, Escape, The Brad. I even helped introduce acts like Killer Mike, T.I., and Ludacris. That's because there were hip hop radio shows in every city like they, they are now. And then toward the 90s, we're getting to the 90s. Then, you know, um, there were more opportunities. Hip-hop radio stations stopped popping up across the country. So now you could actually be a radio personality as well as a mixer on this radio station. And you could also tour with artists. And you could also get record deals. Um, and so, you know, the, the role of the DJ has just grown, grown, and just grown. And so the beauty of it is for someone like myself, I was able to tour with acts, be on the radio, do an album deal, produce a remix for this album, scratch on this song, you know, do all these things and, uh, you know, have a, a long career, especially coming from the mid 80s. Well, when one of the keys to being a, a, a really good DJ is that you have to be able to read your crowd, which means you have to understand and see who is in the building and pay attention to what they react to or what they don't react to because sometimes no reaction is also a reaction. to other countries I mean you have to do your homework when you get there um, 
whether that's paying attention to the radio, using the internet, having a discussion with the DJ who's going to open up for you. However you need to figure out how to get your hands on those records that are, are I would say local to that particular area and that could be Switzerland, that could be Germany, that could be Australia. Wherever you are you got to pay attention to where you are and try to soak up the culture as fast as you can. Um, but also what I do when I, when I DJ because I love music you know my whole thing is um, I just like to rotate music. I like to rotate styles of music because they all connect in some form of fashion. So I can easily go from a hip hop record to a reggae record to a reggae tone record, you know, to a pop record, um, to a dance record, and I, I'll just move it on around and really fill out the crowd that way, you know, and that's just in the earlier part of my set. So, you know, DJs have different ways of doing it. We all got the same records, but I think for me in particular, my ability to scratch and mix. <laughs> be a showman on the turntables is what separates me from you know maybe another DJ who again has the same records you know what I mean and he can read the crowd and he can rock the mic but I can really get busy with the turntables in front of me because it's my instrument it's the way I always approached it because I'm from the old school this is what we do what separates me from other DJs is that I'm me I'm Nabs um, you know like any art form, it's really an expression of self. So, um, when I decide how I'm going to do this mix, um, when I when I let the music take over how I'm feeling and my emotions, and 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 I, I have the skill set to to create a show right in front of your eyes, to remix this song right in front of your eyes, I'm being me. So I can only be me when I do this. Um, I have a lot of great DJs that I love and respect and love to watch and love to listen to. And again, I, the, the ones I really, really love are the ones that are just doing it their way. So I learned that a long time ago, which is to really express yourself in your own individual, you know, your own, your own individual way. I mean, it's the best way I can explain it. Um, the way I deal with um, a malfunction or a problem with today's technology, which is basically the laptop, is I have two laptops and an iPod. So, you know, my laptop shuts down for any reason. I can either hit play on the iPod while I try to attend to that issue or I uh, just quickly unplug my first laptop, plug in my second laptop. That's how you deal with that. Okay, my, um, my passion project at the moment is my documentary, which is called American DJ Story. It's a project that kind of, well, I say it landed in my lap because it's not something that I decided I would go out and start shooting. It's something that I realized that Upon going through a bunch of old footage, I realized a lot of moments were captured. Um, you know, again, my own life, but really the six degrees of separation that separates us all. I've been in Atlanta since 1988. That's over 20 years. And we, um, and I say we as in my friends, my team, you know, we would pick that camera up and just cut the camera on. And we just caught so many incredible moments from, from the Freaknik days to um, you know the birth of Atlanta's first rap station which had people myself Lala Vasquez Ludacris who was Chris Lover Lover back in the day um, Shaka Zulu who's Ludacris's manager you know and, and other people in that era and of course my experiences with So So Def uh, the tour with Michael Jackson um, and, and more things so you know upon looking at all that footage and being a fan of history and being a fan of documentaries I realized that oh my god here's a story um, about all of those things I just mentioned, you know, just in this big gumbo pot. I knew to make my mark, I had to move to the big city. 
Man, look ahead, man. This is wild. Atlanta about making some money. I was in the National Guard, school, working at the station for free, DJing wherever I could, just trying to make it. So it's something that um, I've been working on now diligently for about five years and something I hope um, that the public could be able to see on a, you know, a major level, on a major network is my hope. Um, you know, there's always YouTube, but, um, you know, you don't have to hope for that. You can just upload to YouTube. My, my goal is for it to really be connected to a brand. So hopefully you'll be seeing American DJ story soon. Right. My name is DJ Nabs in the lab. And this is my life as a DJ.